an all too familiar sight. Black grass destroying a decent field of wheat. I'm off to meet Andrew Richards, one of Agri Senior Agronomists, to look at some novel trials that reduce black grass control and swap them for bumblebees. Sounds interesting. Let's see what Andrew's got to say. I can clearly see a lot of bad black grass. So Andrew, tell me about this experiment. Well, back in um, autumn 2020, we decided this bottom half of the field here to put into AB15 a, a two-year legume fallow option to deliver for improved black grass control and in the second year, more importantly, or as importantly, for env the environmental benefits. So in autumn 20, we planted a fully replicated AB15 trial to the left of those white boards you can see that run down the field. And, um, the top one, we have the three mixtures. One included ryegrass, um, vetches, um, and uh, char um, clover, and plot two, uh, mix two, where there's concerns from some of the ecologists that there's not enough wild flowers in the mix, and also people concerned about ryegrass issues with no perennial grass in. And then we had a third mix, which was um, the ryegrass replaced the agri-special mix with crested dog's tail, as some people are concerned that ryegrass becoming a problem in itself. In year one, you're allowed to mow it as much as you like. So we planted it all beginning of September 2020. And then in the spring of 21, it just looked like a field of volunteer oats, which had been the previous crop. We mowed and removed these in May and then mowed and removed them again at the end of the summer. And by the spring of 2022, the crop looked completely different. You could pick out all the um, different uh, mixes and you could see the clover coming through. And over last summer, it was just an absolute um, delight to see in terms of its environmental benefits, number of butterflies, birds nesting in there. Then in August 20, one following the uh, 22 rather sorry following the middle of august you're allowed then to remove it so we cut and removed it sprayed off the regrowth and planted wheat out here on the 18th of october we planted the wheat straight across in in may 2021 we cut and removed um each of the plots and we repeated that in august now in the second year um, we, you're only allowed to, if you're uh, running within the scheme, mow it up until the uh, beginning of May. So we cut and removed the beginning of May, and then the plots were left for the wildlife, and we had huge numbers of butterflies, bees, birds nesting out there, until the end of the AB15 period, which is the 15th of August. At this point, we cut and removed again, let it regrow, sprayed off, and then drilled with winter wheat on the 18th of October using the cross slot direct drill. So we didn't disturb the surface again. We'd had two years of no seeding of black grass and planted wheat into this. So tell me, Andrew, um, you've done some plant counts. Give me an indication of the plant count numbers. So Andrew, you say this is the control. Tell me about it. Yeah, so this is a third wheat in, in the field, untreated. It's had no herbicide other than the Roundup it had pre-drilling. And as you can see, the wheat is being dragged down almost now by the black grass. When the counts were done, there was 300 heads per square metre. And I expect over the last few weeks, a few more have come up and we're probably looking at five or 600 heads per square metre. So the one I'm standing in? So this again is untreated herbicide wise. And we're looking here at maybe 10 black grass heads per square metre. The difference here is in this six metre strip here, we had mix one of the AB15 with the rye grass. And as you can see, the black grass um, is just, you know, just an absolute fraction of what we've got um, in our third cereal plot. And the one behind me? The one behind you, that was AB15, but with no perennial grass in. So that is just our vetches and clovers. And in the AB15 mix, when we counted last summer, despite the cutting, we still had 19 or 20 heads of black grass per square metre. That looks a lot more than that now, though. Absolutely. That's multiplied up to over 300 heads per square metre. Right. Very similar to the third week. So we actually gained, in terms of our black grass control, nothing from having an AB15 mix without a perennial grass within the mixture. But standing on that line, I mean, it, 
It's unbelievably different. Absolutely. And, and let's uh, go to the third one. And it's replicated right the way through the trial. How many reps? Four reps. Right, and can we go to the third mix? Yep. Right, Andrew, this is the third one. This is the Agri mix. Absolutely, this is the Agri Stroke Marek special AB15 mix where we've replaced ryegrass with crested dog's tail. And as you can see here, a very similar outcome. During the uh, two years of, of the, the AB15, we've managed to eradicate most of the black grass. And we're down here, similar numbers in the sort of 0 to 20 heads per square metre. We're actually in a plot that's had no herbicide um, whatsoever this spring. So no herbicide one. since sowing? No. Hey Andrew, um, apart from these major black grass reductions, um, anything on soil or carbon? Or, yeah, or, or certainly, well, well, we've had the AB15, which is quite surprising to me, within you know, having looked at grasses previously. With the AB15 mix, we're looking typically at a 0.4% increase in soil organic matter within two years, which is equivalent of um, it's laid down an extra seven tonnes per hectare of carbon, or, well. e or we've got also within the soil, you could look at it another way, there's 270 kilos of organic nitrogen that has been fixed in the Crikey. soil. Crikey. And this is all in a scheme uh, that you were getting paid for? This, yeah, absolutely. So we, this was a pure trial here. This isn't particularly actually in the scheme, but if we were part of the scheme, we'd have been earning 600 plus pounds per hectare for the two years. And when I costed this out um, against growing cropping in the fields using the agri uh, map data, benchmarking data, if your fields are in the bottom 25%, having two years of this within a, a six year rotation was more profitable than trying to grow some of the other um, sort of more marginal break crops. And the other benefits you mentioned, go through those again quickly? Well, again, as we've seen with the others, we've got an improvement in organic matter, the um, soil structure, and all that rooting from the, um, uh, the clovers, the vetches, and the different materials. We've got a far more friable um, top surface of the crop here. But you, as a long-standing <laughs> long agronomist, have you seen anything like this before? I've never seen such a clear sort of black and white trial where, um, you know, with every replica, it looks exactly the same. And that to actually have such a sort of contrast of going from naught to sort of 20 black grass heads per square metre, hopping over a line, the only difference being um, what was in the mixture in the previous two years, resulting in 300 heads, I find it quite extraordinary. So how would you summarise this, your, your parting shot to those that are Well, interested? it's given me a great deal of confidence in that AB15, managed in the correct way and grown properly, can both deliver for wildlife and, importantly, it's an important tool in our level of black grass management. Because as many people have found out this year, where they thought they got on top of black grass, those two wet summers of 19 and 20, the results are still coming back to bite us. And with um, difficult spring this year, a lack of crop competition in a lot of cases, black grass numbers and heads are a real talking point and issue for many farmers. Could, and, I, could I be bold enough at this point to say, am I looking at the perfect marriage between farming and wildlife in a win-win? Well, certainly, absolutely. No, no, definitely a win-win a, a um, situation here. The, from last year, we really, you know, you could see a real benefit to the environment. And in fact, Mike Markham's wife really enjoyed coming down here for a wander in the evenings and hearing all the birds um, and, uh, and seeing the var wildlife that was being brought into these plots. And then this year, we're really enjoying having some clean wheat in a year when there's so much black grass around. It's certainly given us some encouragement to, um, as another tool in our armory to managing black grass. Andrew, that's brilliant. Um, I'll leave you with that parting shot from Andrew. This might well be something that we see more in the future where we can bring farming and wildlife more close together with the benefit for both parties.